Hi everyone, I'm Susan and today we're going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day by talking about how to keep track of all the nature we've been looking at this whole series. And that's by doing our nature journals. So I'm just going to share with you some tips you can put in your journal, um, some different things you can add to it and some different ways to make it. The great thing about nature journals is you can make them out of anything you have at home. If you have an old notebook, um, any kind of size, you can use that. That works really great for recording all the observations, all the things you're gonna see and hear. Um, if you have a sketchbook, that works really well too, especially if you're gonna be drawing a lot. Um, either of those will work. If you don't have either of those at home, that's okay. Um, you can make a nature journal. Um, and I'm gonna show you two examples of ones you can make with just stuff you have around your house. All right, the first homemade version of a nature journal we're gonna make is this one. This one just uses paper. So you're gonna need some paper, any paper you have at your house. You're gonna need scissors, tape, and then any kind of string or yarn you have available to you. So first step in this one, you're gonna take some paper, it can be recycled paper. You're just gonna fold it in half like a book. If you don't have any string or tape, you can stop right here. This will work really well for a nature journal. Or if you have a stapler at home, you can staple it down the middle instead of doing what I'm about to show you. That's another easy way to make a book out of this. Um, but we're gonna start with this. Then we're gonna take our string, open this back up. Oops, the knot in my string. You're gonna lay it right down the middle. Have some hanging over doesn't have to be super precise. And you're gonna tape this right down the middle, right on that crease that you folded. And then fold it back up. Take that extra string and bring it along this side. You can even, if you want, make it as long as that side of the book so you know you have enough to tie. You're gonna cut that. And then you're just gonna tie it either in a knot or a bow just so it wraps all the way around. And if there's any extra you don't want on there, you can cut that off too. There you go. Now you have a nature journal that you can use when you go outside. Here's the next example of one you can make at home. Um, this one actually uses paper lunch bags. So if you have any paper lunch bags at home, you can use that instead of paper. Um, so all you're gonna need, similar to the paper one, at least three lunch bags, two or three. You can do more if you want. You can also add more to this later. It's pretty easy to add some on. What you're gonna do, you're going to tape down these flaps. So again, you're going to need tape, scissors, the paper bags, and string. Once those are all taped down, you're going to stack these. Actually, you want to alternate them. So if this, the bottom of the bag's here, you're going to put that one on this side and alternate them however many you have. And then just like the paper one, you're gonna fold it in half like a book. And you're gonna open it back up. And then now it's the same process as that paper one I showed you. You're gonna lay that string in the middle, a little bit overhanging. You're gonna tape it down. Fold it over. Put the extra. And then tie it. There you go. Now you have a nature journal you can use. The cool thing about this one is if you're in a place where you can collect things, like your backyard, you have little pockets here that you can collect that stuff in. Like if you see a cool leaf or a cool flower or anything like that, you have a place to put it inside your nature journal. So now we're gonna start filling these up. 
Now that you have your nature journal made, um, it's totally fine to just go outside with your blank journal and just start writing down whatever you want in it, whatever you see or hear. Um, but if you want to make it a little more organized, I wanna show you some categories you can write in there if you wanna keep track of stuff um, from a certain category. Um, so first I wrote my name on the front. You can decorate it however you want. And then these are just examples of ways you can break down the different pages. You can do it however you want, however works for you. So you can keep track of different plants you see. You could have a section for plants. You have a section for just animals in general. If you want to get more specific, like you've been watching the videos, you can write frogs. This we could write frogs you see and frogs you hear. You could also do different birds. Uh, the Audubon website uh, has bird checklists for Indiana, so you could print those off and tape them into your nature journal and then keep track of each bird you see as you see it and check it off. You can also write the list in here too if you want. You can break down a different way if you want by using your five senses. So you can write down things you hear. So I've been hearing chipmunks, I've been hearing birds, I could write those here. If you know the specific bird call or frog call you're hearing, you can write that in here. This is a great way to practice identifying those different calls and songs. You can also just write down things you see. So this could be animals you see, birds you see, but it could also be what those animals are doing. So if you see a bird building a nest, if you see a squirrel eating, those are all things you keep track of here. This could also be things like if you see a creek, um, different things in the creek you see. Things you smell, if you smell different flowers or things like that. Or even things you hear. So these are all different categories you can use if you wanna organize your nature journal a certain way. So nature journals are a great way to keep track of all the stuff you see and hear when you're outside, but they also help with some other things. They help with something called observational skills. So just helping you practice really absorbing and really paying attention to things you're seeing and hearing when you're outside. Um, also, it helps you just appreciate your surroundings more. Your backyard or the place around your house or your apartment might not seem that interesting at first, but once you really start to pay, start paying attention to the plants, to the bugs, to the birds and frogs you might see, the other animals, it starts to get a lot more interesting. It can help you just appreciate your surroundings a lot more. If you're keeping a really detailed record of the things you're seeing in your journal, um, another piece of information you can record is the date and time you see something, because these can both have big influences on the stuff you're going to see. Um, obviously the date, uh, different times of year, you're going to see different stuff, um, especially with plants. Um, and then another piece, uh, time of day can also be a big factor. Birds and frogs are more active at certain times of day than others. Um, and then another thing you can record is the weather. So today it's a little bit like stormy looking outside um, and that can influence the stuff you're seeing too. Cause a lot of animals might be trying to find shelter right now if they feel like a storm's coming in. So again, date, time and weather, another great thing to record in your journal when you're making your observations. So here's a good thing to observe. This is something called wild bergamot. If you're keeping track of the plants you see, it's a flower. Pollinators really like this flower. You can also observe some ants. I don't know exactly what kind of ants these are, but we have a lot of them here. Um, but this can be something you want to record in your journal. Um, you can just write down the name if you know what it is. Also, if you don't know what it is, you can just record observations about it. So we have kind of a purpley pink flower. We have opposite leaves down the stem lots of petals. Um, so you can just draw it and record uh, details about it and then you can look it up when you get home. Here is a decomposer. This is a fungus, it's a mushroom. I don't know exactly what kind of mushroom, so what I would do is I would draw this in my nature journal. I would keep track of the colors. It's a really, really pale brown color. I could even keep track of where I found it. Um, sometimes your location can give you a big clue when you're identifying something. And then I can take that information home and I can look it up later and really identify what type of mushroom this is. Another thing you can take with you, um, I typically just take a pencil with me when I'm doing nature journaling, when I'm out walking around. But if you want, you can take some other stuff with you too. You can take colored pencils, markers, anything if you need help recording the color of the stuff you're gonna see. Because sometimes when you don't know what a plant is, um, you're trying to record stuff so you can look it up later, it's hard to just write down the color. Sometimes it's easier to just color it in. Um, it's a little better reference. So here we have a wild raspberry. So I've done a sketch of it. I've also recorded the date, time, and weather in mine. I just like keeping track of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of color to my drawing. So we have this nice red here. These aren't very ripe yet, but if you remember what helps create these, it's our pollinators. They help to pollinate this raspberry plant. So I'm gonna pick a nice kind of pale red color 
try this one. I'm gonna add some color to my berries, just right around the edges of them. I can kind of see the time of year that this berry is not quite ripe yet. And I can go in and I can also add some green. Darker green on the leaves. This way you can also record the color. So you can either do this at home or if you want to spend more time outside, you can sit outside and color your things in too. I'm going to do a little bit of brown. This is kind of a brown green here on the big stem. So I'm going to do a layer of brown. I'll do some green over it. I'm going to mix those colors together. This is just more information you can add into your nature journal, either while you're out hiking or you can do this when you get home. Fill in some of the color on your drawings. And these drawings don't have to be perfect. They're just little sketches so you can keep track of the things you saw. So just one more piece of information you can add to your journal. Here's the bird you could hear behind me while I was drawing that raspberry. This is a gray cat bird. It call, its call kind of sounds like a meowing kitten or a meowing cat a little bit. So like I said earlier, you don't just have to record stuff you see, you can also record stuff you hear. So we're gonna sit here for a moment and just see how many different kinds of birds or other sounds that we can hear in this spot that we're observing. We heard all those red-winged blackbirds in that last clip. Here are some foraging in the grass. If you look really closely, you can see a little bit of red on their wings. Here's a plant you might remember from the pollinator video. This is a common milkweed, and uh, this is the uh, plant we need for monarch butterflies. This is the only plant that their caterpillars will eat. It's a really, really important plant to have around. This one's in bloom, so you can see it's really pretty, kind of purpley pink flowers. And here we have a pollinator. I think this is a bumblebee and it's on what looks to be some kind of locust tree sapling with those yellow flowers. Here's a mammal. So it's hard to see, but this is an Eastern cottontail rabbit. So these are pretty common. You'll probably see one of these even out in your yard, even if you live in like a downtown area, you can see rabbits hopping around. Oh, there it goes. Here is another pollinator. I'm not sure what this is. This might be a bee, but it is on a black-eyed Susan flower. So black-eyed Susans, I think I mentioned this in the pollinator video, but they're a great uh, flower for pollinators that you can plant in your yard pretty easily. Here's another flower we can observe. So we were talking about pollinators. We talked about the purple cone flower. This is a different kind of cone flower. It's the prairie cone flower. Um, but another great plant for pollinators. So again, if I was writing this in my journal, I'd write the name of it, or if I didn't know the name, I would just draw, try to draw a picture as best I can and record the color, record the shape. Um, the fact that, that the center of the flower um, is so much higher than the petals is really distinctive. And I'd also record that it has alternate leaves on it. It's all really important for identifying it later if I don't know what it is now. Here's kind of a cool thing, and you might see one of these when you're out hiking. Um, this is an ant hill. It's a pretty active one. You can see the ants moving around, but this is where they live. So you can see them going in and out. So you could just sit for a while and observe the ants at this ant hill if you wanted to. You could also try to draw this in your nature journal. So here is a cool tree. This is actually the state tree of Indiana. It's the tulip tree. Um, if you remember from our plant video, we talked about alternate leaves and opposite leaves. This one has alternate leaves down the stem. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it also has single leaves versus compound. The leaf on this tree is really distinctive. It makes it really easy to identify. So when you're recording this in your journal, you can just write it down. 
but maybe record some other observations. So you can either draw the leaf, so you keep track of the shape. You can also write that it has alternate leaves. And it has simple leaves. So your nature journal is just a great place to just record observations of nature, keep track of what you see. Um, then you can go back and reference it. You can keep track of how many different trees you find. Just a great way to store information. Now that we've walked around and made some observations in our journal, um, I'm gonna show you another way to record information that we found. So, you know, this tulip leaf we found on our hike. I'm gonna show you another way to record some of the plants you found and something called a leaf rubbing. I'm gonna show you on the paper bag journal. You can do this on any of them. This is just gonna show you one advantage of having these pockets, but this will work with any of the paper. You're gonna take the pocket and you're gonna tuck that leaf right inside of it very carefully. Flatten it down and then take your colored pencil or your crayon and you're going to color right over the top. And you're gonna see it's gonna pick up the shape and pattern on that leaf. So this works really well if you're in a place where you can collect things like your backyard. So now we have a record of the tulip tree that we saw and the tulip leaf that we found. So there's the leaf and then make sure you label it so you remember what you saw, so you remember what it's called. So this is another cool way to record information in your nature journal. After that, you can leave the leaf in here. It will kind of press it down and preserve it a little bit. Or if you don't want to leave the leaf in here, you can take it out and put it back in the soil and it will decompose and add nutrients back in for those other plants. So once you've figured out what you want to look for and made some observations, you now have the start of your very own nature journal. You can record the plants you see, like the black-eyed Susans or the cone flowers or the tulip trees we saw. You can record the different animals, like that eastern cottontail or like the bumblebee. There's our leaf rubbing there, the tulip tree. We didn't see any frogs today, but you can keep that section available. Record any birds you see, you can check them up on the list. You can draw pictures of them. Any birds that you hear, you can go home and draw later. Um, you can look up a picture. So we heard this goldfinch. And then anything else that you see. Um, so we saw the wild raspberry, we saw the common milkweed, the um, white dunce cat mushroom, the ant hill. So you can record even just things that aren't specific flowers or specific animals, um, but just kind of little scenes you see, like the ant hill we saw the ants crawling around. We didn't smell anything today, but you can definitely keep track of any flowers that you smell. And then you just have a great record of the things you see in nature. And you can keep filling this journal up. Once this one's full, you can start a whole new one. You can add pages. This is something you can really keep um, throughout your whole life. You can keep making observations of uh, different things in nature and just really get an idea of all the different things that are around you. So I've shown you some ways that um, I like to record my observations. I've shown you some ways I like to organize my nature journal, but this resource is for you. So make it unique and make it work for the ways you like to record your information and ways you like to remember the stuff you see. Whether that's drawing, whether that's writing, or whether that's even cutting out pictures from a magazine or getting pictures from online, whatever works for you to record your observations is how you should do your nature journal at home. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had fun and I hope you get a chance to get outside and see all the animals, plants, and all kinds of things that are living right around where you're at.